Hello. In this video, we are going to look at another uh, current mirror, which is the emitter degenerated current mirror. Notice that I have taken my basic current mirror to transistor current mirror, uh, which consists of Q1 and Q2 configured as in a mirror configuration, uh, where Q1 is diode connected, meaning collector connected to base. Uh, but now instead of tying the two emitters together, I have added two resistors, R1 and R2, each to the emitter of one of those transistors. Um, uh, that's referred to as emitter degeneration uh, or emitter degenerated uh, current source. And the reason for that is those resistors um, provide negative feedback into the circuit. And negative feedback is also sometimes referred to as degeneration. That's the name emitter degenerated. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what the current ratios will be for this transistor. I can see that I'm going to have um, my VBE voltage drops, VBE1, VBE2 across my transistors. Um, and uh, I'm going to ignore, in this case, the effect just for simplicity, uh, the effect of the base current going into the transistors Q1 and Q2. So I'm going to assume basically that IREF is exactly equal to IC1. Let's go ahead and look at what the value of IREF will be, first of all. And IREF will be the current uh, through resistor R, and that's going to be the voltage across that resistor divided by the resistance. So VCC minus... Uh, and now we notice that the collector of transistor Q1 is sitting at uh, VVE1 plus the voltage drop across R1. So this is going to be minus VVE1 minus IC1 R1. All that divided by R. And again, I'm going to make the assumption the IREF is approximately equal to IC1, so I'm ignoring base currents, and this is for simplicity of calculations. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, solve the circuit by applying Kirchhoff's voltage law around the loop that's formed uh, at the bottom here. That's my loop um, L1, let's call it. And so Kirchhoff voltage law applied around loop uh, one, uh, sum of voltage drops is equal to zero around a closed loop, or sum of voltage rises equals sum of voltage drops, however we want to express it. So let's go ahead and calculate uh, the voltage drops. So I'm going to have first uh, uh, the voltage drop across resistor R1, which is a voltage rise, so I'm going to express it as a negative voltage drop, minus IC1 uh, R1, but we just said we're going to approximate IC1 as I ref, so minus I ref. R1 minus VBE1 plus VBE2 plus the voltage drop across R2, which is going to be I out R2, that's equal to zero. Um, and so my I ref R1 plus VBE1 will equal I out R2 plus BBE2. I've just uh, rearranged the terms. Now, if I'm assuming that these two transistors are well matched so that uh, the VBEs can be approximated as being equal, so assuming uh, VBE1 equals VBE2, I can just express it as simply VBE and I can um, replace that value into my equations and I'll see that um, I'll end up with I ref R1 um, equals I out R2, where I out over I ref, my current transfer ratio, is equal to R1 over R2. And so the importance of this result is that notice that the, uh, the current ratio is now determined by the ratio of two external resistors. So uh, this gives us the possibility of um, 
adjusting the, the output current by varying uh, resistors. So um, current transfer ratio. Determined by resistor ratio. Um, notice that uh, this approximation, this is actually an approximation that we have made, and um, it tends to work out whenever we have the voltage drop across R1 uh, be relatively large compared to the thermal voltage. And so typically when we are designing this type of circuit, we'll make sure that uh, we make the voltage drop across R1 approximately equal to one volt as a rule of thumb, maybe, you know, a little bit higher or lower. Uh, but we don't want to get it too low because we don't want to get it close to um, the thermal voltage VT. So, uh, little note here, design note. Uh, this approximation holds for um, IREF R1 greater than the thermal voltage. Uh, as a rule of thumb, when we are designing, we'll choose IREF times R1 to be um, approximately equal to 1 volt. Why do I say when we are designing? Well, if we are analyzing a circuit, uh, you know, it's going to come with a value of R1, and so that current is just going to be what it is. But what we are designing, and we are uh, doing good design, to make the circuit uh, robust, then we will want to select an R1 value so that that uh, condition is met. The next thing, we're going to take a look at the output resistance for the circuit. Uh, and you may just be tempted to think that the output resistance is equal to little ro, uh, but actually if you go through the small signal analysis, you will see that the introduction of um, the degeneration resistors has introduced negative feedback in the circuit, uh, which increases the output resistance of this current source. And so we won't do the full derivation, but we'll write the we'll write out the result, and is that R out is equal to little R O times one plus G M times R two in parallel with R pi. R pi being beta times little r e, and this will be R pi 2. Uh, one thing to notice is, again, our output resistance has increased with respect to the simple current mirror, and the simple current mirror was equal to little r o. Uh, this has added an, an additional term, which is gm times parallel combination of R2 and R pi um, times little r o. So it's increased by that much. Uh, another thing to notice is that there is a maximum value for this since gm is equal to 1 over little r e and r pi and I guess I should be consistent and just write, you know, this is gm2 and r pi is equal to beta times little r e uh, the maximum value for this term will be when R2 is very large, um, we'll approximate it as an open circuit or infinity. When that is the case, uh, the parallel combination of R2 and R pi 2 simply becomes R pi. Uh, and GM uh, times R pi, since GM is 1 over little r e and R pi is beta times r e, is equal to beta. So it's beta when R2 is equal to infinity or an open circuit. And therefore, the R out max will be equal to R out 1 plus beta. So, um, again, we're whenever we're looking at a new uh, current source, we want to look at the advantages with respect to other, typically the basic current mirror, um, as well as disadvantages or trade-offs. The advantages in this case, with respect to the basic mirror, will be increased temperature stability 
and the reason for that is because uh, resistors have a lower temperature coefficient than VBE. And so in the case of the basic current mirror, we were relying more on the uh, thermal matching of the two transistors so that the VBEs could be assumed to be equal. And here we have assumed them to be equal, but um, even if, if they were not uh, completely equal, the fact that we have the resistors now uh, will make the currents more dependent on the uh, thermal matching between the resistors or the, the uh, value matching between resistors, which is more robust to variations in temperature. So increased temperature stability since resistors have lower temperature coefficient than VBE. Uh, resistors also have a positive temperature coefficient, whereas VBE has a negative temperature coefficient, and so uh, there is even some compensation there. Uh, and then the current transfer ratio depends on resistor matching. rather than uh, transistor matching. And you may wonder, why is that an advantage? And it's not in all cases, maybe I shouldn't have written it under advantages, uh, but it may work out better whenever you're trying to implement a current mirror in a discrete circuit. So this is good for discrete design. Uh, disadvantages or trade-offs will be uh, more components, so more complexity in the circuit. Uh, those components are resistors, and those resistors can become fairly large. And so, again, this is not necessarily always a disadvantage, uh, but it is a disadvantage for IC design. So, uh, add for IC design. Um, as well as, notice that we have now R2 in our circuit, um, and so our output voltage, uh, before it used to be able to go from VCC to um, all the way down to uh, one VCE, and one VCE, we just needed to keep Q2 out of saturation. Now we need the output voltage to be high enough to keep Q2 out of saturation, plus to account for the fact that we have a voltage drop across resistor R2, so we have reduced our um, output voltage swing, if you will, except when you're talking about uh, the output voltage range for a current source, you typically refer to it as the output voltage compliance, the compliance of the current source, meaning the range of output voltages uh, for which the current source will operate. And so lower compliance range and compliance we're referring to um, range of output voltage values. And again, this is due to uh, voltage drop across R2. Uh, so in essence, uh, most times you won't necessarily see uh, emitter degeneration resistors, or at least not uh, implemented with large resistors in integrated circuits, but this does provide um, a better performance current mirror for discrete circuits. And then we're also going to see, in the particular case of a Whittler current source, which is a, a particular case of the emitter degeneration current mirror, we're going to be able to, uh, to gain certain advantages with respect to the basic mirror. But that will be in the next video. Thank you.